Uh, Jim Jones, Rap Dads, take one. First memory of fatherhood. Um, when he was being born, because I almost I got locked up the day he was being born. Oh wow! Were and I had to go crazy on the niggas in the precinct, and tell them I'm gonna start a riot. They better check my name, tell tell. I didn't really end up getting out of that and being able to see him being born. And that wow. wasn't about that wasn't me. That was by the grace of God. Nice. He put you through so many things. But he already know the outcome to the movie. Where were you in your life when you became a dad? What was going on? In your um, life? I was a very at a very scary time of my life. I was doing a lot of stuff that I wouldn't encourage anybody to do. Um, I was outside, as these kids say. Yes. I was very much outside. Um, you could Google a lot of the things about Jim Jones, and if you want to learn more about what I'm talking about. But yeah, it was a very scary time for me, and um. When I had my son, it's kind of one of the things that saved me and put a mm. different perspective on what I thought life was. Word. One of my favorite viral Jim Jones rap dad's moments was that day you had to discipline your son because he, he was he was late to school, he overslept. I had to be on daddy duty today. I had to take this nigga phone today. This little nigga here. Like this little nigga decides he wants to wake up at 9.30 for school when he's supposed to be out the house at 7.30. Talk yeah. about Jim Jones, the father, like when you have to, to be the disciplinarian. It hurts every time I have to be a dad. You know what I mean? Every time I have to act like a father, it hurts because I know. It don't feel good for me. It don't feel good for him. Nine times of ten, if I'm disciplined, I'm taking something away from him. Right. It ain't like when we was younger. Um, you go to jail if you... Talk about Discipline it. your kids too much. Um, so you got to find different ways that uh, uh, that account just as much as uh, some stern, some belt whips would have did. Word. Because they used to whip our ass when we was young. That's a fact. Um, but yeah, I mean, in his new times, kids got a whole new way of thinking. Um, so you got to kind of think on their level. And I know phones and being on Internet and all that is one of the most important things to these kids. Right. Please welcome my good friend Esteban Serrano is here, man. Hey. Esteban! Listen. I'm really proud of him for his new book, The Ten Bad Commandments, Fatherhood Through the Lens of Hip Hop. Let's go over some of the commandments. Ooh, let's do it. Commandment number one, know your role. Know your role. What is a father? You cannot fulfill a role that hasn't been defined. Right. Okay. So if you don't know what those responsibilities are, what those tasks that you need to be uh, over are, how are you going to do a great job? Commandment All number right. two, watch the company you keep. Fatherhood, especially for me, was a great excuse to evaluate my company and see who was adding value and who wasn't adding value. But also, who do I want to have access to my sons? Yeah. Like, uh, commandment number three is protect. The big part of that chapter for me is teaching my sons how to protect their peace. Mm -hmm. uh. That's paramount. So you, you mentioned earlier, too, um, you know, if, if people wanted to know more of, about the, the early days of Jim Jones to just Google, yeah, you know, what right. you would. Have you ever had to have a conversation or have your son ever came to you and was like, Pop, man, what, why, why am I hearing this? Um, nah, because everything that goes on, I always bring. To, I always straightforward with him. Nice. I mean, he he un, he uh, he understood. He understands my life. You know what I mean? Um, as he got older, he understood it more. Um, and anything that I did that I know would get on the news, I always make sure that I, he was the first to know. Um, like I had a, I had got in trouble in Atlanta some years back, and you know? the picture they were trying to paint was way wrong and. I've never done any type of drug besides weed in my life. I haven't even experimented with it. But I had an injury and they had to give me some Percocet pills and they made it seem like it was something different. So I made it a point to call Angie Martinez and tell her, nah, I gotta go up on the show so I can apologize to my son for I know what he heard in the media and I know when he goes to school that shit reflects on him. So a lot of times I was explaining to him to talk him off the edge so he can know who he is in the position of my life and these are the things that you're gonna to have to go up against, and he 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 handled he handled a lot of things very good. A lot of things I know he went through that he never even bothered to mention to me. I know it was hard going to school when you have a a dad who's successful, a dad who's famous, right? And a dad who's always in the fucking news and media for some shit. You know what I mean, so but he had he he held his own. He handled everything good going to school. I'm glad he got his diploma. Um, All right. 
gave him the option when he got his diploma about college or working. Um, he chose to work. Why? Wow. Uh, cho- teach him the difference between being a boss and working for a boss. Um, and he's learning as he's doing both right now. Um, he actually has a job that he goes to a few days out the week. Um, and then he has his own clothing line that he started with a partner of his and is doing ex- extremely well. He's been selling out all his drops and things like that. So, you know, he's learning life. That's amazing. I remember the day when my oldest son, he's 19, when he was a, a junior in high school. And I was telling him, was like, yo, you know, junior year is the year that colleges look at. So if you're going to go to college, you really need to make sure that you focus this year. And he was like, if. And I'm like, yeah, man, if you're going to go to college, he was like, wait, you're not making me go to college? And I'm like, no, I want you to do whatever you want to do. But if this is the route you want to go, then I want to make sure you're prepared for that. What 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 was your kind of thought process behind not pushing college on him? Because I didn't go to college and I became very successful. I don't know college, a lot of a lot of college is full of shit. You know what I mean? It puts you in debt, teach you how to be a robot, work for somebody else. Agreed. Kill your dreams, things like that. Um, but it's great for community. It's great for kids to go to to learn how to be in, 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 in their own environment and dealing with people, grown people on a yes. daily basis. That's like a pre-world into the to the real world. That's what I understand about it. That's what I feel I miss most about not being able to go to college, but I became successful while others were going to college and things like that. But there's a lot of ad- uh, things that you can learn from being in college without having to learn any education. Um, yeah, but man, for the most part, the world is different now. It's not like when we were coming up and they shoved certain things down your throat and we didn't have access to all this information when we was coming up and there's so many hustles and ways to make money. It's way different than it was back then. And if you would ask me this question, maybe when I was in high school, my answer would have maybe been different. Like, yeah, college mm-hmm. is something that everybody needs to do. This is what they're preaching to us and things like that. Whether, you know what I mean, and I had my spat and I made a promise to my grandmother, so I went to college for like a semester. It didn't work out. Cam called me in the middle of my class, like, man, get out of there, man. We got something better to do. And he was right. It don't always happen like that for people, but I gave my son the option just because it could happen for anybody. Like I said, genius running our family. Pardon the scruff. We made the studio, built the booth, downloaded Pro Tools, and I got a new engineer, which is my son, and this is our first session. Another part, you know, of watching you parent or you had him engineering for you in a session. What are some of the ways that, you know, you bring him along and you teach him, but you also are spending that quality time? It it a lot depends on what he's interested in and the things that I think that things that I think might interest him Mm -hmm. will be the things that I try that we can do together. Um, He's a a genius when it comes to working on a computer. As so many kids are, as they're born into these computers, so it's a bit different. So anything right. that naturally anything that has to do with the computer, I have him helping me with. So that's that's how he started to help me put together the, the house studio and was uh, engineering for me and figured that out and things like that. So all the type of things like when I do pop ups. Uh, he got his merch line. I make sure he come out with me. I, I business meetings. I take him with me. Uh, I try to keep him included in a lot of important things. So he, for, the, for him to gain knowledge on certain things in life. Word. So your son is 20 now, right? Yeah. What dynamic do you guys have right now? I, I don't even, I, I, I wouldn't know how to put it. Um, but I know he's getting older, so a lot of things that I, I used to love to do to him, <laughs> and hug on him and kiss on him and all that, he ain't really... He ain't really, jack- <laughs> he ain't jacking none of that shit. Right, now. right. But um, we got a great dynamic. Like, um, I try to lead by example as being a father. Um, so every day he sees me get up and go out and work. Um, that's where he gets his hustle from. He see, he see every day I get up and work out. He gets up every day and go work out. That's wow. where he gets his discipline from. Um, he's very observant. I guess he gets that from me because I'm very quiet, especially around people that I don't know. Right. I won't say a word. Um. Mm-hmm. And he has a lot of my traits um, as he's growing into his own self. So, you know, these lessons that I've been instilling him throughout his life, I'm just hoping that he can pull them out when it's needed as he gets older. Was there a moment in your relationship where you realized that you had done a good job as a dad and that he was, like, ready to, to take that step from being a boy to a man? I'm still being a good father. 
You're always, by the way, you're always going to be. I'm still teaching him a lot a of father. lessons for him to make that transformation. Okay. Being a young man. Right, 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 right. A man, because he's not a boy anymore. Right, for you know sure. I mean? But he's not a grown man yet, neither. Wow. So he's still got a lot of lessons to learn. Um, he could live with me forever if he wanted to, sidebar. Talk and I don't mean it. I don't mean that in no type of way. Right. You know what I mean? If that's what he chooses. Um but when he starts to get a family, that's when you have to <laughs> leave the nest. Yes. You know what I mean? Facts. So I hope he understands the opportunity he has by being able to stay at home with me and use that to his advantage, saving money, doing all the business he can do. Right. Everything he can set up and possibly do until it is time to actually leave the le- nest and Wherever he go, he have all that situated before he even get there. So get his credit up. Do all these things now yeah. while he's in the house with me. I mean, and go from there. And I'm not saying he can't. I'm not saying if he wanted to move out tomorrow, he can. Right. You know what I mean? But I'm not pushing him out. But at yeah, the same yeah. time, I don't want people to think that he's getting a free ride because as he get older, he has to take on more responsibilities in my household. I love that. You know what I mean? Like, you got to start to kick it. And it may not be nothing, <laughs> you heard? And it's not like I need it, but mm. it's the responsibility of the action that he needs I love more that. than I need it, you heard? So if he knows that, damn, I got to pay my pops 400 this month, you heard? Like, yeah. it's cool. You're going to have to pay something for this car. You're going to have to pay yep. something for the crib. You're going to have to pay something for the goodies. You eat this out of house or whole. <laughs> Facts. This nigga, eat, this nigga eat it, bro. <laughs> This I you I would think he got brothers the way this nigga eat. <laughs> like damn, we gotta start against yeah, her. But but these are lessons you get to teach these kids while they are at home. So when they go out, they're not just lost in the world because they were spoiled and you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like, man. So it's like I don't never want people to think like I it's it's a method to my madness and I'm not just giving that man a free ride. Right. I'm on I'm on his head top. Every time I get a chance to, anytime he fuck up, I'm on his head and he knows it. You know what I mean? So I, he, he tries to eliminate that side of me being on top of right. him. Right. You know what I mean? By doing the right thing, by staying straight. Yes. That's what's up. Growing up where where you grow where you grew up, growing up where I grew up, I'm from West Philly. You know, we have kids and they're in a way better position and in the situation in life than we ever were. Mm-hmm. Um, did you ever struggle? Because I did at the beginning of my of my fatherhood journey. Did you ever struggle to kind of simulate the, the the street or the environment you grew up in so that they can get that wisdom and those spidey senses in them? Um, no, nah, because my mom's is so hood. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> she, she's so hood, so it was like, you know, them lessons that I thought he would miss, he definitely got from being around my mom. That's beautiful. You know? Word, word. And I say that in a great way. Of course. I love her soul. She, but... She helped raise me. She helped turn me into a man, so she knows a few tricks. And I do believe she gave them all to my son. Word, word. On the next episode of The Rap Dad's Show. I feel bad for, for taking a car from her, but it was about, like, being truthful and just, you know what I mean? And just take doing what I asked you to do. Right. You know You know what she said, though? What she said? She was like, he mad at me. But he was like, when he was my age, he was selling crap. Oh, my God. <laughs>